why did you take her from my knees? <laughs> I got no understanding. I would respect him more if he tell me why. We definitely need strength. We need prayers. It's a big one. Walk, walk me through the last couple of days. Well, on the 21st, it was my birthday. And she called me, she wished me a birthday. It was like, you know, normal or whatever. We was laughing, joking. And then she just said like, sister, I feel like I'm finna die. So I was like, you know, girl, whatever, you know, brushed it off or whatever, you know, not thinking that's really how she was feeling. Like, she, I guess she was feeling her death. So she, she kept saying her and my niece was going to come and bring me a gift, but they never showed up. So we had talked Sunday, and she was telling me how he was tripping at the fur, and he was trying to leave her and my niece. He was saying, like, she was trying to set him up, you know, flipping out, saying that he, she was trying to set him up. It was Facebook people out there. It was just some weird stuff, you know. So I called in FaceTime on Monday. She never reached back after me. You know, she got a busy life, so I was just like, maybe she'll call me back or something. And then I went to sleep just thinking it was normal. It wasn't nothing. Monday night. My niece called me around 12 something and I was asleep. I was hearing my phone, I was hearing Facebook Messenger and it was like it was just in my dream but as I kept hearing it, I eventually woke up and it was my brother girlfriend saying that my niece haven't heard from her since four. Um, she was stranded in my auntie house and I'm like, what, well, you know, I just, I don't know. I just was like, that's not her. You know what I'm saying? Like, she never leave my niece, no matter what. She never leave my mama, no matter what. So my brother and his girlfriend came, you know, and we just started searching from 12 all the way up until, you know, we had found her that morning. Her car was ditched in Pleasant Village. Like, it, the way the car was set up, the way it was hid, I just felt it in my bones. Like, she was gone, but I just didn't want to see it. I just, it was too many red flags. We asked him, he just showing off a gun, telling my brother he don't know, and, you know, knowing that he had already killed my sister. It's just unbelievable. So there were red flags? It was a lot of red flags. What did she say about about the red flags? About getting getting out, or trying to leave? No, she was just, you know, she always wanted that happy life. She was she was seeing the voice, but he always come back and make her feel better, so it was just she just Loved him, that's it. Like, she always wanted it to work. She was going through stuff, but who don't, you know? But we won't know, like, how deep it was or what all she was going through because she was very secretive. She just gonna tell you what she wants you to know, you know? Cause, you know, a lot of people go back and talk and, you know, stuff like that. So she wasn't giving her all or telling everything, like, my niece probably know more than anybody because that was like, they was best friends, you know, it was just always them. So she would talk to my niece and they'll be talking all times of the night about how he treating them and you know, but he never got back to us. You know, we just got what she wanted to tell us. Yeah. After, after they found her, what happened? What, what was the next progression? After they found her, I lost my mind, so I really don't know what was next. I just wanted my mama, that's it. When, when they found her, did you guys have an idea of who did it already? I mean, she only feel, she stay in 40, so she only feel comfortable being in that area with him. 
So pretty much we knew because he wasn't trying to help us find her. He wasn't like showing no remorse or anything. So like, what kind of mean if you telling him that his wife is missing and my niece had been calling him, like he never not answered the phone for her. So she could tell him like, come and get me, I'm stuck or I'm at my auntie house or whatever it is. Like he, it, it was like, that wasn't him. Like I done been around him. He ain't, he never gave me them kind of signs that he would do that to my sister. Like he never did. So it kind of caught you off, off guard, caught you by it, surprise. It really, really did. What would you say to him? Why? Why? Could have been a hub. He could have did anything else. Why did you take him from my niece? Like, I don't understand. I would respect him more if he tell me why. She did everything. My sister did everything for him. It was nothing he couldn't ask her for. She did everything. She did everything in her power to show him that she loved him no matter what. Like, I just don't understand. I just want to know why. Why would you take my sister from us? Like, why? She didn't deserve that. She didn't deserve to be thrown out the call, whatever you did. Like, she didn't deserve none of that. You could have took her legs, her fingers, anything. Like, why would you take my sister life? You say you love my niece, bro. You can't love her. You took the only thing that she had. The only thing. Yeah, she got us, but it's nothing like her mama. I just really want to ask him why. And then I know Nina was telling me, you know, domestic violence, is, this is the second time it struck your family. It's mine. He went through a bad, bad time with her husband. And my sister wanted to be like my auntie because it's her favorite auntie. Like, she loved my auntie to death. She just wanted to have the biggest house like my auntie did. She just wanted to be happy like my auntie was with her marriage until that accident happened to her. She really looked it up to my auntie like that was her role model. Yeah. What would you say to someone who might be watching this and be going through a similar situation with domestic violence? Get away. Love is not that deep. Love is not that serious, especially if you have kids, just get away, get out of the situation. I don't, I don't wish this on nobody, nobody. Even the situation my auntie went through, I don't wish that on nobody, getting none of their body taken away from them, nothing. I just, just get away. So how long how long did it take police to, to find her husband? The thing about it is we caught the laws that night and they, they just kept saying it was nothing they can do. They knocked on the door, they did the flashlight, they was just saying it was nothing they can do. Like, I don't know, they wasn't giving no help at all. They was like yelling at us, get in the car, like, it was just, they was being rude, and then the whole time, you know what I'm saying, it was really something wrong. So I really, I really don't too much fun to care about the police. Um, what about his arrest? So there was, a, there was a SWAT situation, correct? Yes. Can you tell me about that? It was just, they came out, you know, and broke into the house or whatever, but he wasn't there. So um, someone seen him, you know, coming from a gas station, running across the street to a barber shop, and they made the call, and the police went up there to arrest him. And that's where they ended up arresting him? Yes, at the barber shop. And then there's a video of him leaving a hospital. Do you know anything about that? They said he was so full of PCP that they had to take him to the hospital. Now he's, now he's in jail. 
What do you What do you hope happens next? To him. You need a life sentence. I hope my sister and him to make him kill himself in there. Like going to jail, that's easy. I want his family to feel how we feel. I don't. I don't wish him going to jail. Is oh, that's exciting to me. No. Like he don't deserve to live. Because you you came in, you it's like you probably been hit this plan, like, I don't know. I just feel like no drugs should take over nobody's mind. Your mind should be stronger than it. Like your mind should be stronger than it. You you, you not a man if you was jealous of a female. And then it wasn't like she didn't give you nothing, she gave you everything. So you was jealous for nothing, like you had it good. I don't care if they fry him, I don't care, he needs to die. That's how I feel. Walk me through just kind of leading up to you finding out what happened. Well, yesterday, well, the day before yesterday, my mom called and she told me that her sister had called and said that she was missing. Um, we immediately got up and started looking for contest clues. The first thing was going to her husband's spot. Um, we went there, it was ghost town. We went to Pleasant Village where a car was like, it was like ducked off between a lot of other cars. And the first thing I seen was, I seen a big handprint on the, the driver window. And, you know, I'm a criminal justice major, so I started trying to use like different contact clues. And it's a creek, like in the apartments. So I was like, well, let's look in the creek. At that time, I was waiting on my mom and the rest of the family to come so we could all go, you know, look for her. And as we looking in the creek, I just started getting chills over my whole body. Two minutes later, smashed the topic, posted and said that it was a lady shot to death um, which was like three minutes from where we was at. So immediately when we seen the post on Smash the Topic, we went directly to the location. And when we got there, he was just like, and how they get here so fast? We was already looking. You know, we had been up since like seven in the morning looking. And when we got there, we, you know, had to describe and, you know, get them some details to identify her. And when they came back, they didn't even want to say it was her. It was just the nod in the head. And it's, it just went from there. Everybody just broke down. I, I really don't even have the words because my cousin, she had, she had, a, she had a load. You know what I mean? Like, boys taking care of my aunt. You know, she paralyzed. She got one daughter that's in high school, graduating next year that she'll never be able to see. And she strives so hard to get where she was at. And it's just like, I don't even know. Like, she worked so hard to get where she was at and just to see everything it took from her and her daughter not be able to, you know, carry on, it's, it's, it's hard. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Are you ready? I'm good. But it's gonna be a hard pill to swallow. A very hard pill to swallow. For us, just missing her energy, her vibe, like, you know, her taking care of her mama. Like, us having to go give her mom and her daughter the news after all day, a four hour standoff, or looking for her, trying to find contest clues, not knowing how to tell them, like, this, this it's hard. Like, it, it hurt the city, it hurt a lot of people. Like, she had a lot of love. And, you know, as a family, we're going to stick beside, you know, and make sure we carry her legs in a good, good place. She didn't even get to open up her new business that she had just invested in. So, it's a lot. What kind of business was that? She a tax preparer, and she had a boutique named after her niece, Shea Money Purses and More. So her sign is up in uh, 
on Malcolm X and her new shop. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's, we got a lot of we got a lot of work to do. So on you know on Facebook, I saw you know all these videos. Even if you go on her Facebook, just like her showing how much she loved her husband. She and did, then, and then to hear that, you know, he's the one responsible for this. She she stayed down, like. The whole time he was incarcerated, she stayed down. She she took on all the responsibility by herself. You know, even when he came, like everything was mapped out. She had everything planned for them. She waited for that day to marry him. And during the time of the wedding, we wasn't seeing eye to eye, so I wasn't even a part of the wedding. But now I look back and I'm thankful for that. Cause I I'm, I'm overprotective of my cousins, my mama, my sister, my brother. I'm overprotective, you know. So that's my favorite cousin. Like we did a lot of stuff together for the first time. I introduced her to a lot of stuff. I kept her motivated. So I, as of right now, I just got to be strong for her mom and her daughter. Was there any signs that anything was going wrong in her her marriage? Yeah, of course. Um, you see signs, but. Don't nobody just want to give up like that, you know what I'm saying? So, and she wanted her marriage to be perfect. You know, everybody want that perfect marriage, that one-time marriage, and she 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 did her big one. Like, I can honestly say, like, she was a, she was the perfect wife for him. He just wasn't ready for what she was ready for. Sometimes that be that be the hard part. She thought she could change him, cause he was a street dude. So she thought she could change him. You know, she was raised in the street a little bit too, but as a female, like, it's different than being a man and raised in the street. So, I can't, I can't say she did no wrong in her marriage. Like, she really did right in her marriage. And I just, I can't believe he did that. Knowing she took care of her mama full time, her mama paralyzed, dead bound. Like, her daughter's all she got. I just, he just really took, he put a, he put a burden on my family. Like, it's tough, even for my kids. I got eight year old, like, it's tough. She got nieces and nephews and her eight, her, her youngest niece was just born on the day that she was murdered, 12 hours later. So, it's a, it's a big, it's, it's a big hole in the, in the, in that family right now. Are there any signs that, like, did this catch you guys off off guard? He caught us off guard because he was so quiet. He was so laid back. Like, he was sweet in front of us, but behind closed doors, I just feel like he was a monster. And it it hurt me more because it's a domestic violence case. My mama lost her legs five years ago to a domestic violence case, so she don't. She'll never be able to walk again. And to see my cousin go do the same thing and she not make it out, it's hard. I had to be the one to come and give my mom my smile suscitation to save her. She was dying. And I just hate that we was just a little bit too late. I don't know if I could have helped, if I could have saved her. So. It was signs that led up to certain things. You know, little fights and arguments and, you know, of course it's signs, but of course they're gonna try to hide that from their loved ones because they don't want you to feel the type of way about the person that they love. But yeah. Do you wish she would have confided in you about it? Yes. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about her. She was outgoing. She was outspoken. Um, very energetic. She gonna tell you how she feel. You know what I'm saying? She not gonna keep no secrets from you. If she feel the type of way, she gonna tell you. Love family, like, top tier. Family oriented, like, it's all about her family. It's all about her husband. It's, 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 it's this type of person she was. That's why she had so much love. Cause when Dashay came, like, you felt her energy in the room. She made an impact everywhere she went. Everybody knew her. Oh, and you know, cause I, like I said, both our moms in the wheelchair, so it's like our bond blew closer and closer because she seen that, 
you know, she had to step up. I used to tell her all the time, you got to step up. You the oldest. You know, you got to take care of your mama. So, she held a lot of stuff down. And we, she left, she left, she definitely left a lot of work for us to do and for us to, you know, clean up. And I just hate it came to this situation for her to have to be away from him. I had conversations with her. Um, another incident that happened in their relationship, and she told me, cousin, I'm gonna try to do whatever I can do to save my marriage. I love you enough to understand that, and I want you to be happy. You know, I can't make you happy, I make you happy, but if he hurts you, I'm gonna hurt him. That was I was, what I tell her. And again, like I just, I don't know if it was anything that I could have did to help her in that situation. And we, like I said, we were so close when they found the body. Where they found the body at, we were so close. It's like, damn, like, if I'd have got there a couple minutes early, even if she was suffering, I wish I, you know. But you know, you can't make a person leave somebody that they love. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, when the person loves somebody they love them, you gotta let them, you know, leave when they ready. I just hate that it's too late. Yeah. It seems like she's going to leave a big void in, in the yeah. life, your life, yeah. your family's life. It's... I, I, I really don't even... I can't even write R.I.P. on nothing. I just, I just keep telling her she hurt me. She hurt me, but my goal right now is to, you know, take care of my aunt as much as I can and help put her daughter through school because I know that's what she really wanted more than anything. That was, that's her pride and joy, her daughter. They, that's her best friend. And I know she hurting right now. She trying to stay strong. And I had, that's the reason really why I came here because I haven't even been open. I came here because I just needed that break. We went to see her yesterday. She still looked at herself, but it's just different without her being here. Like without, she's so loud and her energy just so big. It's just like, how can you not? You know what I'm saying? You can't. You, when she come, you know she her. She gonna come to your door. She gonna knock like the police. Like you gonna know it's her. It knocks on the doors, them calls. It's over with. We definitely need strength. We need prayers. It's a big one. And for all this to happen at the hands of someone she was, you know, in love with. Yeah. And then when you walk through her house, Man, from the front door to the back room, to the bathroom, to the closet, it's nothing but pictures, and, and she happy. So it's like, how can you tell somebody not to be with somewhere where they happy? She was happy, like my cousin was happy. Like, I never seen her this happy, never. And we like this. Does yeah. it make you just think about what could have went wrong? Yeah, I want to know. But don't nobody know but them. I just heard so much from my aunt and her daughter. Like, my aunt not 100%, and she can't just, you know, like. But we're going to make sure they're straight. And she used to I always tell my mama, like, I want my, I'm going to fight for my marriage like you fought for yours. I'm going to fight for mine like you fought for yours. That's what she wanted. My mama fought for hers, and she I never walk again. My cousin fought for hers, and she, she gone. So it's like, I hate domestic violence. I really do. And we just went to an event um, like two weeks ago. 
And my mom spoke. She finally told her story. And it touched a lot of people. And I always tell her, like, you got to open up and talk. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about it. A lot of people hide stuff. Cause my mom, she, has, she hid stuff from us for a long time. But the older you get, you start to notice certain things. And it's an eye-opener. And I'm sure her daughter got a lot of stuff bowed up, a lot of stuff she know, because that's her mom, and I'm sure they talk, you know? She old enough to understand. But right now, she's taking it so, she's taking it so good right now, it's, it's scary. She a loner, she the only child. And like I said, her mom is all she really, like she had, so. Her brother, he's taking it tough. Baby was due on the same day, and they was best friends. So it, it's, it's tearing us down, down, like, it's tough.